Good evening. Tonight we take you on an adventure, halfway around the globe to the island of Madagascar off the coast of Africa. But you won't find lions, giraffes, or elephants here. Madagascar's strange and colorful wildlife evolved in isolation. It's a place like no other. You will see these animals tonight, some captured in vivid high definition for the first time, and maybe the last. Our investigation uncovered how an international black market is driving these endangered natural wonders toward extinction. These pictures have never been seen on television before. They show what international law enforcement, the American government, and conservationists around the globe say is an ecological nightmare. Madagascar's national parks are being plundered. These makeshift camps inside the forest house thousands of locals who are illegally chopping down rare and extremely valuable rosewood trees. Each of these trees is worth thousands of dollars on the international market, but the desperate residents of Madagascar are cutting them down for just a few dollars a day. This amateur video was recorded as part of an investigation by two international conservation groups. Ultimately, they hope American prosecutors will use this footage to criminally charge those who are buying Madagascar rosewood. Things are bad. Things are not pretty in Madagascar right now. Andrea Johnson works for the Environmental Investigation Agency, or EIA, one of the conservation groups that organized this investigation on behalf of Madagascar's national parks. In recent months, she has been closely monitoring a sudden spike in Madagascar's precious wood trade. It's not as though there was never illegal logging before 2009, but the situation since the coup in February of 2009 has made everything a whole lot worse. That's when dozens of people died as the military opened fire into a crowd, unleashing panic across the country. The military went on to oust the country's president. Chaos reigned and the economy dissolved. Impoverished people looking to make quick money streamed into the national parks to pirate away the rosewood. The majority of rosewood globally is used for high-end products. And the other big sector in which these woods are used is the musical instrument sector. And rosewood is commonly used in guitars. The international community is just now waking up to Madagascar's logging problems. But the island has been attracting a certain kind of worldwide attention for decades. The lush jungles and unique wildlife have long made Madagascar a mecca for scientific study. Anthropologist Patricia Wright has been coming to this isolated island for 25 years to study the wildlife. Her expertise is primates, but she soon fell in love with the forests, the people, and the land itself. Originally, I studied in South America, in the Amazon. I was very interested in primates and how their behavior is like ours. And then when I got to Madagascar, it was an intriguing place because it is like a, a treasure island. Do you consider it a magical place? Mm, yes. You have these strange plants that look like they're from a different planet. And you have these wonderful animals that are just like nothing else on Earth. So it, it is sort of like a magic kingdom in a way. Madagascar lies just 250 miles off the southeastern African coast, but because it is separated from the continent by deep seas and strong trade winds, the island's creatures evolved in total isolation. At least 70% of Madagascar's plants and animals can be found nowhere else on Earth. Many of these one-of-a-kind species are threatened, including the island's most famous inhabitants, the lemurs. Lemurs are primates, scientifically, just like humans. They're a diverse bunch, some as small as a mouse, others as big as a dog. They're also very rare, but that wasn't always the case. Lemurs evolved about 60 million years ago. But when people arrived on their island just 2,000 years ago, things began to get ugly. 90% of the rainforest and all of the habitat where lemurs lived before has been destroyed in the last couple thousand years. And so for me, it was seeing creatures like nowhere else on Earth and then realizing 
that if somebody didn't do something about saving those creatures, they'd be gone forever and just be fossils. Wright, a professor at the State University of New York at Stony Brook, is trying to save the lemurs by bringing together foreign scientists, tourists, and the people of Madagascar, known as the Malagasy. In 1991, Wright spearheaded the establishment of a national park and research center where she teaches the locals how to make a living from conservation and ecotourism instead of exploiting the land and its forests. It's a model that other scientists are looking to follow. Scientists like Eric Patel. Patel is a doctoral candidate at Cornell University. He got his start in Wright's National Park, but when he saw pictures of very unique lemurs that lived in another part of the country, he was smitten. I learned that there were still a couple lemur species that had never been studied. And I was just kind of stunned by how gorgeous they were. I mean, they're, you know, white puffballs. They're beautiful animals. And I was also stunned by how rare they were. It was just hard to believe how few remained. Since 2001, Patel has made dozens of trips to Madagascar to study these silky safaka lemurs and find a way to save them from extinction. These elusive creatures have become his life's work. They move so acrobatically and so elegantly that, that we joke around that they're superheroes. And in a way, they are superheroes in that they're not extinct yet. Any animal that is teetering so close to being gone uh, deserves superhero status. The Silkies live in and around Merojeji National Park, a world heritage site in northeast Madagascar. Patel is trying to protect them by establishing the same kind of eco-economy in Merojeji that Patricia Wright did in her national park. It gives Patel a unique job, part lemur scientist and part grassroots organizer. There you can see her ear. Look at her right ear. The right ear is the one that's cut. Patel employs Malagasy men to help him track and monitor the lemurs which in turn gives them the skills to guide and interpret for paying tourists. A lot of people are benefiting from tourists here. Researchers and tourists support conservation of Marojeji in a variety of ways, hiring porters to carry luggage and food up the mountain, uh, research guides. All tourists entering the park are required to have one or two research guides and a cook. This does have a trickle-down effect. Patel hopes that if these men are able to earn a living from the national park, they will help protect it and not cut it down. He pays everyone who works for him a good wage, between seven and $20 a day. Steady jobs like these at Marajeji are elusive for most rural Malagasy. Patel believes he must try to save Madagascar as well as study it. And that pleases Professor Wright. Tell us about Eric Patel. Why is the work that he's doing important? Well, Eric is learning the, the daily lifestyle of the Silky Shafak. However, he's also been doing some extraordinary conservation work. He's hired local people, he's been training local people so that they will understand and appreciate the wildlife like he does. But he's up against some tough challenges. Patel is starting to uncover troubling clues of rosewood logging deep inside Marajeji National Park. This wide path into the woods is a new trail cut by the loggers to get to the precious trees. And Mosesi, a park naturalist, discovers something alarming. A logger had cut into the trunk of this tree looking for the deep red core of rosewood. This is not a uh, rosewood, but uh, it's the same family. They think it was a uh, rosewood. That's why they had uh, tried to cut it but finally they have seen, but it is another tree. It was uh, lucky. <laughs> there was a time when the rule of law protected rosewood trees in the national parks. But with the government in disarray, loggers are making their mark and the tourists have stopped coming. Even before the political coup, only about 300 hearty souls made the trip to Marajeji each year. The park is remote, even by Madagascar's standards. Travelers must start out in Antananarivo, 
the country's troubled but picturesque capital. It was once a French colonial city and some of that spirit still remains. From the capital, it's an hour-long plane flight over clearings that used to be forests. That's followed by a long drive through poor rural villages to get to the park. And that's just the beginning. To see the rare silky sifaka lemurs, ambitious visitors climb on a treacherous trail for hours through a dense, wet jungle. This summer, we sent a cameraman and a reporter to join Patel when he went to check on a particular group of silkies that live near a research camp at the center of the park. On the way in, they hear some troubling news. Uh, we'd actually heard a rumor that one of the infants may have been killed during the Rosewood fiasco. We're not sure if that's actually true now. We're still looking for the infants. We haven't found them yet. Mosesi and Desiree, another park naturalist, stopped to show Patel a giant rosewood tree that had, so far, escaped the loggers' axes. The guides estimated the tree was about 75 feet tall and 600 years old. It is a very strong wood, wow. so uh, it needs many, many years to be like this. Yeah. Wow. Mosesi and Desiree's sharp eyes spotted all sorts of bizarre wildlife along the way. They live just a few miles from the park and have acquired a lifetime of knowledge about the flora and fauna. The country and Marajeji National Park in particular is one of the most biologically diverse places on earth. We hiked for a good six and a half hours in a hot, hot day. I feel great, I love it here. And uh, we're all in one piece, we're on schedule, and it's not raining. So odds are good that we'll have the silkies tomorrow, but uh, until we get up there, we can't know for sure, but I'm very optimistic. In the morning, Patel and his crew lead our cameraman and reporter out into the jungle to search for the lemur group and make sure that the infants born less than a year ago are alive. Conducting scientific research in this environment isn't easy. I've worked at about five other field sites in Madagascar, and without question, this is the hardest. We don't have animals with radio collars. We don't have a, uh, an established trail system. You know, it's us and the animals in the forest, and it's steep. It's steep as, as all hell. The foliage is so thick in the rainforest, it can be hard to see other people just a few feet away, much less a cat-sized lemur 50 feet up in the trees. Silky safakas are stealthy and quiet, almost like phantoms of the forest. In truth, the word lemur is from the Latin word for ghost. And that's exactly what Patel thought they were on his first trip to Marajeji. They were completely not accustomed to being observed by humans, and they fled from us for weeks. Um, the first time we saw them, they kind of passed by like ghosts. But on this trip, it doesn't take long for Patel's talented trackers to find the silkies. Silkies are gentle creatures. Patel says they hardly ever fight. They are among the rarest mammals on Earth. Patel estimates there are fewer than 1,000 and maybe only 100 left. In the quiet isolation of the rainforest, it's hard to imagine these animals are severely threatened. But Madagascar's population is exploding. Women have on average five children, and farmland is scarce. Rice fields touch the park's borders, 